Welcome to today's ARCO Afternoon Arts. Thank you for joining me. My name is Amber Crimmings. I am the Artistic Director slash Cat Herder. We started a little late today. We had some internet issues, but we've got everything going on and ready to go. I hope everyone is having a fantastic Labor Day weekend. If you're not, I hope that today's stream will help bring creativity and a little uplift into both your mindset and then also maybe we'll help you build some tools in your toolbox for creating since today is Monday and that is typically our back to basics day. So we're going to play around with some basic stuff. We're going to do some teaching 101 on the human figure. You know humans we are complex creatures not only in physicality but in our souls and so we're going to work on a little bit of trying to get some of that down on paper because we have so many moving parts to our bodies and so many big muscles or maybe little muscles, you know. I kind of put on here, a kindness is never wasted, and I put it on my bicep because, you know, some people act like kindness is a weakness, and I see it as a strength. I used to have bigger muscles when I worked out in the gym, but, you know, now I'm creating and cat herding, so they're a lot smaller than they used to be, but still kind. Hey, Bill. Hey, Linda. Happy you guys are hanging out. It was so awesome. Uh, Bill and Linda came out for a front yard concert. It was really cool to be able to share that with some of our uh, Deep Ellum Art Co. locals. It was uh, so kind. And Doobie even got a wonderful gift bag with cat toys, etc. So he was super excited to... Oops. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to dump you off your bed. But he was very excited to have all that, so thank you guys very much. Okay, we're gonna tap talk talk. We're gonna talk about the human figure. Now it's complex, yeah? And so I've got some books here. I've got this one that's I won't show the actual picture, but it's a nude figure, it's a visual reference for artists. And then I have a really old uh, book by H. Uh, Sigart, and that is Dynamic Anatomy. Now, things like this are super helpful when it comes to figuring out how to draw the body. Now, if you're not comfortable whoops, with looking at nude photography uh, for this or for youngers, really great. You can find photos of people in leotards, um, but we really want to have it as close to the body as possible because we want to learn some of the muscular structure and the things that are in there. So I'm going to do a lot of talking today, and then we're also going to do a little bit of drawing and uh, practicing of some of these techniques. So you can see he's in for the long haul. I've got a pineapple too, y'all. Not for today, just random pineapple. But we're probably going to draw this later this week. So if you're going to go grocery shopping, I'll recommend that you go get a pineapple so you can look at yours in person because these are super complex. And we're going to learn how to do this in charcoal. I used to teach this as a class. It's a fun uh, project and pineapples are popular because we like pineapples. They're one of the sweetest fruits that's out there, so if you are on a diet, avoid pineapple, actually, because it's uh, the most candy-like out of nature's candy. But we're going to go ahead and go down here, and we're going to start looking at some of these books here. I'm going to pull this one off so I don't get in trouble for showing nude photography online, even though it's for our purposes. And I'm going to get some scrap paper rolled out. It's just a roll of paper that I got that I'm going to use to just do some sketching. Again, we're not doing a final project today. We're doing back to the basics. So we're just going to practice some things and learn a couple things too. So one of the things that we want to play around with is muscular structure. Now we want to actually, you know what, we'll, we'll hit on the facial structure first. Now this book has a really good outline of the facial structure that I have already gone over with you um, in past classes. But we're going to kind of play around with this again today. Now, our head in itself is a complex structure, and so we want to play around with all the different things that we have. We have a super complex structure of our ears. Look at all the different things that I've got going on in there, right? All the curves and things, you know, ears are specifically uh, anatomically uh, designed so that they help us hear better. They help funnel that sound down into that little beating drum that we have on the inside and the little hairs Right? If you have tinnitus, which I have a little bit of that, probably from the army. I'm sure everybody that was in the military <laughs> and shotguns had tinnitus probably. Um, but anyway, that's the little hairs vibrating that make that little ringing sound. Um, and then, of course, eyes are extremely, extremely complicated. They have a lot of pieces in them, nose, mouth, all that jazz. So we're going to play around with just getting some of this stuff laid out. And I'm just going to show you some of the structures on this. 
So our head really starts out as this big kind of ball. So imagine I've got a ball here and my jaw kind of drops off of that. And so that's how we're gonna work in our drawing of our head. Remember, I'm doing sketch quality stuff. Okay, so you can see this. I'm gonna get a nice little circle in. Now my circle, I'm gonna kind of break in half here. I'm gonna find the halfway point and break that in half because this is how I'm gonna build my jaw off the top of my head. So I'm gonna take half of that, half of that distance, bring it about down here and I'm gonna make a little line. So this is gonna be where my jaw kind of comes down to and this is where it comes down to what kind of face the person has. If they have a really sharp kind of chin and you're doing anime, if they have a real boxy chin, um, if they've got big uh, cheekbones, we can add all that stuff in there, but this is the basic kind of plot for it. And so then I'm going to go in and start adding the rest of my lines, you know, this is going to be the structure for the nose, right here. My eyes are going to exist underneath this line, is where my kind of eye structure will live. And you see, I'm just, I'm holding my pencil loosely. You know, when we do sketching, we want to be loose, right? And so, psychologically, because a lot of things come down to the brain, when I write with my pencil like this, I'm used to doing things precisely, aren't you? Because when I hold my pencil like this, I'm writing all the numbers I need to write, I'm writing my name, and, you know, I'm playing around and doing all these things that have to be legible, that other people have to be able to read, that are using the left side of my brain, which is that logical side. So I'm trying to get my hand to connect to my brain in a different way, which is in a creative brain, which is the right way, because it's the right side of my brain. <laughs> See what I did there? So I need to change sometimes the way I hold my pencil, because it helps signal to my brain I'm doing something different with this material. And so for some people, this is a good way to get over that hump in creativity and help connect in with that mind and muscle connection, because that's what we're doing with this. We're creating a mind and muscle connection, much like playing basketball. Mind and muscle connection on when you let go, how hard you're pushing that ball onto that trajectory, at what point you release the ball on that trajectory, right? And so that's all muscle mind memory. Same thing with drawing. It can be a sport, maybe, one day. But anyway, I'm going to shift, and I'm going to hold my pencil in a looser manner. Sorry about my thumb. I've got a band-aid on. I smashed it in a door, and I can't really get my ring off, so it'll, it'll be fine. All right, so I'm going to get this, uh, the rest of this drawn in. I've got that, and then I need my mouth, and so my mouth is going to exist halfway in between these, and that's going to, you know, give me my nice little here. You know, and that line becomes that center line. So I'm just going in and getting some basic stuff in so you can see that face kind of get drawn in a little bit. You know, so that we can get some of these details in. And so that will continue to just kind of grow and draw and build. You know, you go in and you start adding some of your shadow lines in there. And then, of course, we need our eyebrows. And then we'll have hair built. So this is like the way that we're going to kind of work on. And, you know, the framework doesn't have to be exact. You see, I'm building in. And then the ears always exist between the eye and the nose. And the thing is, most of the time, everybody draws the ears too small. Look at the ears, and really, I promise, I don't have freakishly long ears. It's normal. <laughs> so you take your ear, it kind of goes right to your eye. You see that? So if I take my pencil and keep it at the same angle, and I bring it down here, what happens? It goes to my nose, right? It's that whole expanse, y'all. It's that whole expanse from the eye to the nose. I know it might look big when you're drawing, but still, that's how big it is on your face. So you want to draw it the same way on your drawing. Drawings all go through what I call the awkward teenage face, ATP. We all go through the awkward teenage face. I was awkward. You know what? Go look at the beginning Art Co. afternoon classes that are still online so you can see just how awkward I am. I'm always awkward, but you know what? 
is also great that I'm over 40, so I don't care if I'm awkward, you know? I know I'm kind, and I know that I love creating with you guys, and so being awkward is kind of okay with me. And Dupes likes my awkward self. You see how much he hangs out, so it can't be too terrible. All right, so awkward with our ears, we want to make sure that we're drawing them big enough. So we want to make sure our ears, and from the side, you know, we're not going to see a ton of that ear structure. We're not going to see a ton of it at all. I mean, maybe, again, this all kind of boils down to, uh, you know, what the person is and what their physical. Some people have ears that pop out further. Um, I know sometimes, at least these days, when I put my mask on, if I pull it on too tight, my ears do that. If yours do that, I'm not sure. Anyway, just sharing the weird stuff that goes through <laughs> my brain. So... Just getting all that stuff kind of pulled in. And so then we get, you know, the neck and the shirt. And you can build all that stuff in and start building. And then, of course, you know, hair. Hair makes a big difference. It can really... I gave them long hair. Well, there you go. So we're just doing basics. So there's your basic outline for your face, which we've gone over before. So now let's talk about the basic proportions for our human body. So in looking at our human body, we've got a really great expanse, and I'm going to find an image that's not a nude image here that shows me the whole body standing up, because most of these kind of knock most of it out. Where's a standing one? We're not going to go over hands and such, because we've already done that. I don't think I have one that's just straight up standing. We've got this great guy that's pointing pointing up to the heavens. Buttocks are okay though, so we'll be fine there. I don't think I have anything else. Here's a guy that's gesturing at the uh, crowd there. He might be the best one actually. Let's work with this. Eh, that's going to be confusing for y'all. For y'all, these guys are fighting. We're going to go over some of the anatomy on here in a second. But we're going to play around with those. Now, okay, so we've got this great guy that's in motion here. I love this because it does start playing around and showing you how the body will shift and change as uh, the uh, arm itself here changes. You see how the muscular structure changes and looks different from the different angles. And so we're going to play around with that ourselves. But first what you need to know is how to figure out how tall and how wide to make the body in the first place. And so, you know on my head, I kind of use my circle as my jumping off point to kind of like good enough for government work, kind of get some measurements in to kind of create this sense of proportion. And remember, proportion is one of our elements and principles of art, and that is meaning that all the parts are the right size and in the right position in relation to other parts. That would be proportion. Everything is in proportion. Except for when you do like caricatures or you look at cartoons, say in the newspaper. All of those are out of proportion because they play around with like, you know, creating more bulbous noses or bigger eyes, like anime. And so we're not going for that. We want to get some nice realistic proportion. And so what I'm going to do first, now that I know, for instance, on this, getting back to, I used kind of rudimentary a way to measure. So now this whole head that we drew, we're going to create a head over here, and our head's going to become our new measuring tool for the rest of our body. So I'm going to start right here where you can see, and I'm going to create a little head here. And this is going to be really small because I just want to show you the body measurements. So this is going to be my head right here for my human. Human. Human proportions. Now these are the general rule for proportions. Obviously, you know, someone's going to be heftier, someone's going to be shorter, like for instance my mom's really short so she never could get a hold of things in the top cabinets and I was always the tall one that could so I'd help her with it as maybe I wasn't as nice as I should be as a teenager to her about the fact that she was short but anyway some people are shorter, some people are taller. But in general rule we're going to work on this. Now in general we're going to start creating our torso. So our torso takes up a good amount of space. For instance, here. 
We don't want to forget about the neck. Now the neck can create its own dimension, but with the head forward, we really just kind of create a little right there for the neck, yeah? And so now when I look at this, standing up, typical proportions would be about one, one, two. So about two heads is what your torso is going to be. So I'm going to take my rudimentary measurement here, one, two. And so this is going to be our torso, all right? I've got our length here, but I've got to figure out my width. And so, again, keeping in mind that humans are humans and we're all slightly different, right? But in general, our head for our width is also our width off to the side for our shoulders. So you see one head width there for my left shoulder, a head width, and then a head width here for my right shoulder. So three heads is across is going to be how wide your frame should be, which can feel really big when you first start drawing. But remember, ATP, awkward teenage phase. So we're going to go with it even though it doesn't feel like it matches. And I'm going to actually measure the width of my head here. And I'm going to get that down there, my width of my head here. And I'm going to get that here. Now that feels huge and like a football player to me. But I'm going to go ahead and go with that. And I'm going to create just like this. Kind of nice broad frame with a skinnier, say, waist. I don't know if I'm doing a girl or a guy right now, but we're just going to stick with that for now. All right? And so I'm going to stick with creating a sort of waist. So now I want to get the rest of my legs in. And so my legs alone are going to take up a lot of my length. So when we look at, say, this drawing here of a person and I go to measure it, I'm going to have one, two, two head lengths to the knee, and then one, two, two head lengths to the foot. And so that's going to get me all the way down to where the feet are. And so I'm going to pretend my guy is just, he is a soldier standing at attention, and he is going to just be straight on with arms hanging straight down at the sides and standing straight up so that we can show you all these correct proportions. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to measure out one, Two. This is going to be where my knees live. And then I'm just going to measure this whole block right here because I know it's already two head lengths. And that's going to be where my feet reside. And so I'm going to go in and I'm going to build my legs. Now i got to remember my legs don't come out of one origination point. Do you remember when we talked about hands? And we talked about how the fingers phalange out, right? They web out. Why? because they're pulled by a tendon network that goes through a single point through here called the carpal tunnel. This tunnel is where all these tendons kind of connect and come together and then, you know, through the use of those is how we open and close our hands. Well, our, hand, our legs don't go, th go through a carpal tunnel. They connect at two sides, the left hip or the left hip and the right hip, right? And so we want to make sure when we're drawing them that we're not creating those legs out of one section. So I really just want to create two kind of lanes here. I'm going to start out as a bit of a stick figure because I want to build these later. And again, we're working on basic proportions right now. So now I got to deal along with my arms. And my arms are like my legs except half the amount. I just need one, one head length for each one. And so, like, look, if we look at our arms, if I go from my shoulder to my elbow, and I've got about a head length right there, right? Because this whole thing is my shoulder that kind of pops up. And my shoulder kind of ends right there. So we've got an approximation. My, my arms are kind of longer than everybody else's. I have, like, uh, monkey-like arms. Very long. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to create my arm lengths here. And this is just going to take us to the wrist. I'm also going to have my hand and I'm just going to create little mittens and really our hands are about this, look at that, hands almost, almost the size, you connect it up with your chin, almost, almost the whole height of my head. You can do the same thing 
um, with your drawings, but I'm just going to create little mitten shapes here so that I've got some that are fitting in with uh, all of this so that I can create. And you know, and this is where you can go in and we can start working on creating some little bubble shapes for our guys. I always give circles for the knees. The kneecap area is really this great area. It's got, you know, of course, kneecaps when we look at uh, anatomy wise in our legs. We've got uh, these nice little circles or squares um, that are you know, go on top of our legs. You know, you look in something like this, this kneecap here, it's that covering on top of the legs that kind of helps protect all of those tendons as that leg flexes and bends and then it goes straight. I know this because I fractured my kneecap one time and uh, it was not fun, nor did it feel good. I had to have a knee surgery and that was the last of my marathon running. No more long distance running for me. I miss my kneecaps working well. Anyway, we're going to go in and create, you know, he's got a nice little thigh gap. we got to make sure we've got the buttocks in there. And we create like these really nice kind of shapes in order to get our body in. And so this helps us kind of get and gain something that is in proportion with itself in ways that it should be. And so this helps us create a framework that we can then go on top of and create all of our shading, etc. Look, here's a great picture of those carpal tunnels that I was talking about going up into that framework there. You know, if you don't have one of these books that shows you the anatomy as an artist, and you're having problems drawing structures like hands, etc. A lot of this stuff you can find online as well. Medical illustrations are going to be your friend if you're trying to learn how to draw a person and how all of these uh, interact and work. And what I really love about books like this is they go in and they actually tell you those muscle groups. Did you know artists like Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Michelangelo, etc., they would actually keep cadavers, uh, dead bodies, in their studios so that they could also dissect and uh, learn how the anatomy worked so that they could better draw it. Um, they had relationships with local doctors in their areas so that they could do this. And they also shared with and did some of this, uh, these dissections with uh, local doctors of the time. So yet another way that the arts intersects with other fields and adds a huge amount of intrinsic value. I mean, think without artists, medical illustrations, etc., that we need in so many of our medical books. I mean, it almost darn near would be really hard to uh, prove a lot of court cases and then also teach a lot of doctors without the ability um, to have artists that help kind of uh, draw and show all of that. So I'm going to go in and we're going to play with recreating one of these drawings here. Oops, I'm going to fix this guy, get this guy going. And I'm going to get you guys popped down and we're going to work on kind of drawing this. I think we'll play around with uh, something super simple here. if I've got any. Let's see if I have one here that I can show that's not too terribly awful. Here, here's one that's super simple. We don't have anything super nudie on this one, and I'll actually tape over the buttocks. That way I can show this and not have to worry about getting in trouble. Okay, so I'm just putting some 
blue tape on here so it's not going to mar up the book. And I'm going to use this as an example for one of our drawings here. That way we're not working off of the drawing because I don't really want you to work off the drawing because the drawing is already going to tell you how to interpret real life into line or shadow work. And really what you're trying to do is you're trying to learn how to draw real life and interpret it. So if you take the interpretation out, it makes it a little bit harder for you to uh, kind of figure stuff out. So I like making sure that we work with, um, you know, an actual real image here. So I'm gonna go in and I'm really just gonna draw it about the same size. I'm not gonna try to expand, you know, I'm not gonna complicate the problem as I'm trying to learn. So make sure you're not doing the same thing. Let's keep as many variables and skills that we need to have down to a minimum if you're not really good at enlarging things and why add that problem on this plate. So we're going to keep this the same size and I'm just going to work on trying to get this gal drawn realistically. So I'm going to, you know, start working on this and see if I can get some of this going here. I'm going to estimate this circle, this head, Knowing that my hair is going to be bigger, there's one, 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 two, one, two, two. Now my shoulders aren't going to be the same because she's turned. Now remember, all the things that we just went over was somebody standing super straight, right? and not turned away. So for instance, our shoulder width, when we talk about the three head widths for our shoulders, that changes the minute I turn them, right? So now my shoulder's a lot closer to my head than it was before, and in different ways from the back to the front. Also, what can happen that we didn't talk about is that our shoulders can change angles. So as I shift, I'm changing angles. And so when we're standing, we always have our angles shift. So you see here, for instance, the angles of her shoulders shifts down. Well, what's really cool about the human body is that we were creatures built to be balanced. And so when we tilt one way on one side, then our body automatically compensates and tilts a different way, AKA the hips. So if the shoulders are tipping this way, then the hips will tip in a fairly equal but opposite reaction. And now this is, of course, taking into account this is normal movement. So if we're working to have both sideways, first off, it's going to be hard to stand up straight. You should try it. Do your shoulders sideways and try to do your hips sideways too and see how long you're standing up for. Double dare, start now. It's hard, and so that contrapposto is what it's called, um, is what helps keep us uh, balanced. So I'll type that in, that way you have it. Contrapposto is what it's called, and so this is going to be that balance or that change in angular structure from our shoulders to our hips. So I want to make sure that I've got this in when I'm doing my drawing. So I'm actually going to go in. And, you know, I'm going to have that shoulder line really should, should pop up about right there. So I'm going to grab this angle here where you can just draw that angle in. And I'm just going to get an angle in there. You know, I don't care how wide it is. I just want to get it in. And I want to do the same thing for the hips. You know, I'm going to get that angle in and I'm going to get that other angle drawn. And what's cool is you're going to watch this bleed into everything else because what happens is this angular shift is going to shift, you know, that, that two head length. So now my two head length here, maybe this is going to shift down a little bit since this went down below that measurement line. And then it's going to shift up a little bit too. So we're going to see how this is going to affect the legs as we go from this straightforward pose to one that's slightly shifted. And even slightly shifted, you see that results in a fairly significant change in the angle of those body structures. And so I'm going to go in and I'm just going to kind of start creating, you know, I've got a bit of a shoulder here, not much, and I'm going to kind of draw that through 
And then I'm just gonna go in and estimate where these things kind of live, you know? Just, and I know that my arm doesn't go all the way down to my hip structure here, it hides. And so I'm just gonna use some of these ideas in order to start building. And you know, if I'm working off a picture that I printed, I can use my pencil to grab angles if I'm drawing right beside it. Now this only works if you keep both of them static, meaning that you're not shifting and moving things around, and that they're actually perfectly equal and parallel the edges to each other. That way any angle I pull here, I can take and I basically can transfer it, pick it up, shift it over, transfer, right? So that helps me kind of copy. It makes me a bit of a human copier when it comes to just getting those angles. And those angles help me. For instance, if I've got my shoulder and my arm here, I can grab a basic angle there, boom, right there. And then I can grab a basic angle of where both these arms kind of get hidden by the body and the hips. So you see how I'm playing with these in order to get all of those in. And so I'm just kind of drawing stuff in. I'm doing this step by step and in layers because I want to make sure that you guys are understanding how we're getting this stuff drawn in. So I'm going in and I'm trying to play around with all of my angles. Now I've got my angle on my leg here that I want to grab. So I'm going to grab that angle and get a general one in, you know? I'm not going to draw the buttocks because I can't see it right now, but we'll play around with that. And now I want to grab in this angle. This angle, man, we've got a shoulder that comes out, a fairly flat spot here, and then it curls under and then goes in. That's kind of how that line goes. Now I'm trying to mimic this line that's happening right here. I don't want to give it a perfect thing, but I do want to play around with it. And I want to grab this angle of the body right here. So I'm going to go in and I'm just trying to get that body shape in there. And so then we do a wild shift here. Let me get this curved out. You see how I'm just kind of taking my pencil and mimicking it. I'm trying to work smarter, not harder. I'm trying to get all of this in. And then I want to get the rest of this leg angle in. So from the buttocks to there. You see how I'm just kind of working with basic angles here as I'm going in and refining stuff. So I'm going to go in. See how this is really starting to come together. If I can get some of my hair in here. Can you see how I'm playing around with my hair? I want to get some of this stuff in, that way it'll give us a nice contrast. And I'm trying to make sure I remember that the way and the angle in which I color is going to matter. And I'm just using a regular pencil for this, we're just doing some sketch quality stuff. I'm just going in and getting her hair drawn in, getting a nice little structure built. So that we've got some sort of semblance of an idea here for our shape. You know, we can go in and we can play with our, our line thicknesses as well. Remember, we're working on interpreting, you guys. You're interpreting this photo that you're working off of. And so always remember that. 
as you're working. I try to remember that as well. And so I'm going in and I'm going to try to figure out where this intersection point is. So what I can do is I can try to do a bit of triangulation and how I do that is that I'm going to actually pull some angles from multiple spots. And yes, Bill, this is uh, playing around with like the cycle of fifths and the like with the math of music because math very much plays into art as well. I wish I had my earrings in, um, but the Fibonacci sequence is an absolutely perfect example of this. Um, the Fibonacci sequence is also referred to as God's signature in nature because the way that things unfurl uh, when it comes to how shells grow in that spiral or how plants grow, uh, that can actually be predicted and emulated through the mathematical uh, 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 calculation of the Fibonacci sequence. And so it actually speaks on that growth that happens naturally. And you can find it in so many places in nature, and that sequence applies naturally in so many places. That's why I like, I build the Fibonacci sequence into a bunch of things. I've got it integrated in one of my tattoos, because while I may ha might have tattoos and look like a biker girl to some, they're all based on good human messages, etc. Kind of like a kindness is never wasted. I like the lion and the mouse story. It's one of my favorite because it speaks on power and it speaks on being kind no matter what station you are in life um, and that everyone is valuable from the mouse to the lion. And so I like that kind of message. Anyway, I like playing around with that stuff. And so we're going in, we're getting all this stuff kind of in. I need to figure out my knees now. Remember we talked our hips changed, so that's going to figure it change where our feet are. I haven't gotten down there yet. I'm just working on a straight line drawing of this gal. Now, my knees are at about the same because even though we shifted, we've kind of crossed them together. So I've got a beautiful knee structure that kind of shows up right here. So first I need to figure out where this intersection is going to live. So again, back to triangulating. I'm going to take this armpit and triangulate to here using also this armpit. So I'm going to take both armpits, the angles to this, and I'm going to use those in order to figure out where my angle is. Now that one intersected right here. And so now I'm going to grab this other armpit here that outside edge right there, outside edge right, oh my goodness, and it intersected right here. So that gave me my spot that should match up to where this is, which gives me an idea of where this leg should live. And so I'm going to go in also and figure out my what my width is on this. What's my width here? So I'm going to take my book, I'm going to measure with my fingers. Ooh, it's not as wide as my head, just a little short of it. So I'm going to take, oh yeah, we're about the right thickness. That seemed kind of thick to me, but measurement wise it makes sense. So even though it seems like it's a little fat, I'm going to go with it anyway because awkward teenage phase. Don't trust the teenager, crazy brain, just make sure you go through it and trust the process. All right, so I'm going to go in and I am going to get my knees created. I can see that this does a curve down and then we create almost a bit of a, you know, we've got a nice little calf muscle going on right there. And I see this foot's picked up. I'm not going to mess with it yet, but we're going to kind of stick with that for our shapes. And now I've got to work on this one. This one is kind of Hard. I'm going to get that one cleaned up a little, and then I want to go in And why does this one go below the line? Because remember, we have the contrapposto. So, 
this isn't coming from the center, it's coming from over here. And since we took a straight line and we angled it this way, that means we've slightly dropped that connection point. Which means my guideline down here really is going to be slightly lower for that foot because that leg's going to get pushed down along the rest of the way, right? So I need to make sure that I'm keeping that in mind. And this foot's slightly pulled off the, the ground. So I'm just going to kind of go in and play with the foot structures here. And see if we can... Feet have always been kind of hard for me. They haven't been the easiest, that's for sure. But we'll try. I'm not the best at feet, but uh... That seems to work okay. Ah. Ah. Feet are not my... I never really, I'm not a big foot person, guys. <laughs> you learn that at least. Okay, so we're just gonna, we're gonna get some feet in there. It's an awful looking foot, but we're just gonna move on. Maybe I can fix it later. Sometimes when I get frustrated with something like that, I'm like, ah, I can't get that to work. Don't get stuck on it. There's lots of other things to work with in the drawing. And sometimes I found if I step away with it, staple, step away from it, and it percolates and you know, uh, drips and I think about it in the background, then I can kind of uh, get it figured out and come back to it later. So don't freak out too much. And now I've got this other foot, so maybe I'll kind of build these back up against each other. You know, this leg needs to connect. So I've got this, this old gal connecting right down here. And a lot of this, too, will get fixed with the actual shading of this as well. So remember, sometimes our line work can look awkward. But really, it's the shading that will bring it together. And so, like, I've got this cool little bell kind of shape here that I'm going to go ahead and because this is going to create some other structures in there. And I've got to make sure I've got the ankle bone in there, even though it looks so weird. But we're going to keep it anyway because that's the ankle. It looks like a weird little hoof right now, but we are going to fix this along with all of our shading because, again, the shading is going to show this Achilles, Achilles heel. I'm going to show you. Look at that. That looks really awkward right now. But really, that's the shape. If you look at it, it goes it goes straight up. It goes almost straight up, and then it goes in and over. And so we're doing the same thing. A little, well, maybe I bowed it out a little bit. So we go straight up and over. And so it looks odd, but again, with our shading, we're going to be able to come in and fix this old gal up. Which is what we're going to do real quick, because we're about done with our live stream today. I know we started a little late, but we're going to get her kind of fixed up and, uh, uh, you know, drawn. I'm going to go ahead and take this off, that way I can, off to the side. Because I can draw it, I just don't want to show the image on here in case. And then I need to go in and get my buttocks drawn in. So I'm going to do this part without showing you the photo. But we're also going to work on where these kind of live. I need to get my... kind of getting all this stuff kind of taken care of. And 
so now I've got a nice little kind of buttock structure built. So we've got this really great beginning. So now I'm going to go in. We're just going to continue to get a bunch of stuff taken care of. Maybe I'm going to go in with this so that I can darken up some little areas through here. So I'm just going to go in and get some of this stuff taken care of. And get some more some more detail in, yeah? And so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to start playing around with my shading. I'm using like an ebony pencil here. But I'm just going to play around with my crossing, my hatching, and my cross hatching is really what I'm going to play around with on this. So I'm going to get this gal and I'm going to play around with getting all of this in here. So I'm going to have a really cool nice back line here, but I've really only got a sharp line for a short amount. So I really don't want to put a lot of that line in. And I want to make sure that I've got a good sharp line here and here. And I've also got a lot of dark stuff going on in here because of the shadow that all of this is throwing. So I can go in here and get a lot of this taken care of. And we've got a lot of core shadow because that leg is throwing another shadow up on it. So we want to go in and start getting all this taken care of. Now I'm just going to fill in my darkest shadows first because I want to, you know, I don't want to build it up too fast. I'm going to get some of the shadowing around my heel here. So I have some of that taken care of. And then we'll start getting some of our shadowing in our foot here. Maybe this will help us farm out and get some things taken care of. I'm going to go in and start getting some of my shadowing put in here. And so as we go in and we start getting some of the shading in, it does kind of help start giving it some of that credence that we need for that shape. See how that foot just starts kind of coming together. You see that? And our other foot with our nice little processes here in order to create that ankle kind of shape helps us go in, helps us refine all these edges and get all of this stuff kind of in. Look at that. Got some fantastic shading happening here. And we're going to go in and get some more of that shading happening through here. Now I've got my knee structure in here, so I want to make sure that I'm showcasing some of that. So I've got a little bit of shadow work going for the underside of the knee. And I want to make sure that I'm being careful with that because I don't want it to blend in too much. with the rest of the other leg. So you see I'm going in here and I'm building all these shadows really, really gently as I'm going through and trying to get this full force of this image of this woman in the body. And again, playing around with our proportions, making sure that these are things that we're focusing on as we do our drawing, this helps us continue to bleed out and create this idea of realistic drawing. So you see here even I can get this real gentle shift 
here. We've also got these really great shadows for the rest of her back. And so you see in here, I can build it slowly as I go. And this really starts adding to and building in. This really great shadow that really helps us, you know, create this idea of a nice rounded figure. Now you see how that's starting to come alive? And of course, then the, all the other stuff starts looking odd when it's not filled in. So we gotta go in, add some of the shadow work through there, and of course we've got some poor shadow stuff So that we are working on all of those shadows and getting those built in. And then I'm also going to build these through the arm section. You see I've got some nice little line runs that kind of run through there. And that helps us continue to build on, grow, and work on our realistic drawing skills if we build things up in these nice little manageable pieces of practice. You know, that's why I took out all the shading when we were figuring out the line work and we take out the expansion or making the drawn image bigger than the one that we're working off of. You know, and if you have a person who's willing to just sit and chill out and not move for a bit, you can also practice doing this um, with someone uh, in a long drawing session. You can also practice this anytime once you figure out how to do this faster. Um, then you can also practice this out in public while you're drinking a cup of coffee or eating lunch as well. Bill says, learning a lot today, in learning interesting and informative class. All four of us enjoyed it. Oh, awesome. Happy you guys enjoyed the class. I always like to bring in a bit of teaching. You know, these classes aren't always about making something fun, exciting, and uh, a perfect little project because that's not life. Um, sometimes it's just about learning and it's not about what the end result is. And so make sure you're spending today and maybe play around, practice with a couple things, find some images of yours um, that you can practice off of, and maybe, maybe arm yourself with some more knowledge and learn a couple muscle groups. Maybe there's a particular part of the body that's the hardest part for you to draw. Maybe it's the face, the hand, maybe the leg or the foot. Uh, go in there, go find some info online, and start learning some of the muscles in those structures and looking at those structures more. Because if you can break them down to all their requisite parts that are fairly simple in uh, each of their own independent bits, you know, we've, we've got hands, a thumb we can figure out how to draw, we can break this down into simple blocky structures before we go in to actually creating all the bulbous. You see that blocky structure in here, and I've gone through these classes with you guys before. So you can go back, look at those classes, take those techniques that maybe I showed you with the hands, etc., and you can apply those to other parts of the body as well. You know, I teach you this very kind of block it out, and line it out, and then uh, build it, you know. It kind of goes back to where I mix my creative process with my logical left side of the brain process. And, you know, I did construction both with my parents when I was a teen in the Army and since. So I've been around a bunch of construction stuff to me. So the way my brain works as an artist and uh, works as a teacher to teach others is that we get that foundational stuff down first before we get to putting the wallpaper up. And so I really like attacking all these kind of ways to slowly build stuff and make sure that, uh, you know, the structure is solid before we go in and start adding in all the other details like our shading, etc. So anyway, I'm happy you guys enjoyed the class. I did too. Make sure you're taking a look at the rest of our 
live streams on our YouTube channel. We've got all our art classes archived so you can go back and take a look at those. Make sure you are taking a look at our donation link. Support local businesses like ourselves. Make sure you click uh, make a donation so that we can continue to be here to serve you on the other side of the things when we can be totally open. We've got brand new art gallery shows going to you from William Bubba Flint and Chase Fleischman and we've got some great artists that are going to be uh, going in the yard once we have the yard open up for operations and also make sure that lastly you are taking a look at our online galleries. We work with uh, over 350 different types of creatives in the DFW area. All of the work that we have online for sale is by locals. You will be doing your mission in city when you purchase an original piece of art. And know that our quarantine, uh, uh, what is it, gallery? That's the word. Words are hard. Our quarantine gallery that's up right now, um, that one is 100% donated works by local artists. Make sure you take a look at that one too and know that 100% of the proceeds goes to Artco. And then our other one, Solitary Creations, of course, are the normal. And you can go in, support a local artist, and uh, purchase a piece of original art, the utmost in exclusivity. And you can catch me tomorrow, Tuesday. Tomorrow is art therapy, art journaling time. We'll be working in our little book, uh, doing a nice little crosstalk of our creativity and thinking about things that are going on in our times. I know last week we did a play on how to realistically draw a little bit with our colored pencils in our thing, and we were talking about rebirth and regrowth after molting and losing things, and the peacocks are a great lesson in that. Um, so we did a nice little play on letting go and being more sketchy and then doing some parts that are more realistic uh, within our drawing. So if you didn't catch that last time, make sure you uh, go back and take a look. I will see you guys tomorrow at 3 p.m. Make sure you have a beautiful day and spread kindness and joy wherever you go. And please always remember that Deep Elm Art Company is definitely created, dedicated to the creative and the native. See you guys next time.